Good afternoon, everyone. Really appreciate you coming out. And uh, right now, uh, I'm not going to give a long introduction because our governor, uh, we didn't see much of him the first year he was in because of the COVID thing. But since this, this has almost been a second home to him, we're going to put him a desk in, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're really happy. Uh, this governor has been good to our county and all the counties around us and has shared well on the uh, uh, COVID rounds of money, the CARES Act, and the ARPA, and, these, and, and then all these special projects. Without further ado, I want to give you our governor, Andy Bashir. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Judge, for that introduction. I look forward to that desk. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited to be in Ohio County today with some great news. For the two counties represented here today, we'll be awarding $4.2 million in awards. <laughs> These are awards that better the lives of all of our citizens. They'll go to resurface roads that our families use every day to get to school and to church and to work. They'll increase reliable, high-speed internet. They'll support cleaner water projects, increase tourism in this amazing area, and support local nonprofits who are doing God's work every single day to help lift up every single Kentucky family. Our people are worth it. And every investment that we make out of Frankfurt that goes directly into our communities selected by our communities help move them forward. Uh, working uh, with our local officials who have had such amazing leadership all over Kentucky through the most adversity I can ever remember in a short period of time. Uh, we think about not just having gotten through a pandemic, but tornadoes, flooding, ice storms, wind storms, the polar plunge, the coldest I can ever remember it, and now the hottest summer on record. Now still even with the, the, the personal tragedies that we have pushed through, these types of investments make sure we're paying it forward that our kids and our grandkids have more opportunity, more chances to, to chase their dreams right here in Kentucky than we could have ever imagined. That should be the legacy that we all want to leave, that gift of a better world to every single Kentucky child, no matter where they live. And as we'll talk about in a little bit, I think we're getting closer and closer to it as we're starting to beat out all our surrounding states for these big investments and truly moving the Commonwealth forward. So our first award are two awards from our transportation cabinet that will improve local roads and streets in Ohio and McLean counties so that our families are traveling safely. First, we have an award for more than $85,700 that will go towards resurfacing Hopewell Road in Ohio County. Judge, if you please accept the check. Thank you. And I'd like a magistrate from that district here to come on up and help with this. Larry. Hopewell Road is in his district. Yes. He can grab onto about 40 grand of this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You Thank you, you so much. The road? Thank you so much. Thank this you. was, uh, uh, this is in the Horse Branch area, and uh, we're really proud of it. It was much needed, and it helped the residents there to have a better road to live on, and we're just very thankful that we was able to get it for everybody there. And now, uh, for Judge Dame, we have an award yeah, for $252,000 for two roads in, in McLean County. So, Judge, if you'd please join us to accept this check. It may make Judge Johnson jealous. It's like a large <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so obviously uh, we have two road projects. As you know how this goes, we do a review of the road, just like what we've seen here in Ohio County. And through the diligent efforts of the Kentucky Transportation Office and obviously the governor and his staff, we're able to accomplish the task of resurfacing these roads. I think we all know we have infrastructure that needs help. This is just a small portion to help get us through. We're very thankful and thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. 
So these two awards are examples of what they call discretionary funding through the Transportation Cabinet. I'm proud that since I've become governor, we have had discretionary funding go to all 120 of our counties. Every single one of our families deserve uh, that type of investment. And I proposed uh, an infrastructure budget for this next session that in addition to increasing the amounts available for this, would have an additional road and bridge fund for repairs to ensure we're doing even more in each of our communities. Next, we got a big one. Now, high-speed internet access isn't the infrastructure of the future, it's the infrastructure of right now. It's necessary for all of our families from everything, from work to health care, education, and entertainment. And with the dollars coming down that we have seen from the federal government and that our state legislatures invested, I've been proud to make the two largest public sector investments in the expansion of broadband in the history of Kentucky. But more is coming. With what's called the BEAT Act funding, I believe over the next four years, we will be able to announce uh, that we are going to get high-speed internet access to every home and every business across Kentucky. That'll be a pretty special day. And so today, we've got help for right here in Ohio County. We have $1.2 million plus for charter communications to bring high-speed internet access to more than 627 homes and businesses in Ohio County. With the required matching funds, the total investment, thanks to charter on their side too, that's being made in the expansion is $3,709,249. We've got Carla Sandusky, Senior Manager of Government Affairs of Charter Communications. Let's give them a big round of applause for expanding internet access. All right, thank you. You want to mention the project? Oh, please do. Oh, okay. Yes, we are so very. We're already in Ohio County, as most of you may be aware. But we're so excited to be able to expand our cable plant or broadband plant through to over 200 homes in the rural part of the county that does not currently have access to broadband. So we're so excited. I can't explain it. And thank you so much for helping make this possible. This is wonderful. So thank you all so very much. Yes, uh, when I came into office, uh, our cause was about potholes and stray dogs. And quickly that advanced to broadband. And, and three out of four uh, requests we get now is for broadband. So this is much needed. And uh, we're going to get with you on some questions about uh, when and, and where. So we, we're really excited that this is going to happen. All right. More to come. Next, we have several awards from our Cleaner Water Program. Our first Cleaner Water Award today is for nearly $93,000 and goes to the Ohio County Fiscal Court. Your Majesty should keep staying here. Hey, you guys. <laughs> I, think, I think they, on, on broadband, I, come on, Michael. They held a million and they're gone. <laughs> I guess Jason and Lee. Yeah. All right. Wait, wait. I have one more, please. One oh, more. sure. She, she wants to know. Pick there we go. Newspaper, we got to them. That's, oh. that we, that's our Ohio County paparazzi. There you go. <laughs> doing a great job of it. Next, we have an award for $424,020 for the city of Beaver Dam. Mayor, if you join us uh, with Judge to accept this check. to be able to do any kind of rehab and extension on our sewer projects and it's, it's things like this that make it that make it happen small towns we just don't have the funding so we're very appreciative and thank you so much so these dollars and we have one more coming we're part of a half a billion dollars in in ARPA funds 
that uh, working with the General Assembly, we came to an agreement. Investing in water is always a good investment. It creates a bunch of jobs, and it's a basic human right. Um, those dollars are all grant dollars. In other words, the ratepayers, uh, the families, uh, don't see their bills increase for these dollars that go into it. Uh, I get that we have aging water systems all over Kentucky, so my next proposed budget has another half a billion dollars worth of grants that would be allocated to each and every county. As long as, Judge, you can help me get through that General Assembly, we'll be back here with more of these great projects for our counties and our cities. Oh, yes. The other neat part about that was it required judges and mayors to come together and to come to agreement, working with our ad districts. By the way, can we give your ad district one of the best in the state a big round of applause? But the, the neat part about it was it required agreement, and I still remember being in the room that day, and I think I said this up here on this stage, and somebody said, Andy, if you think uh, state politics is hard, and I said, yes. They said, woo, local politics can be real hard, too. But you know what? All 120 counties, all 120 judges and mayors came to agreement not on just one round, but both rounds. You all were showing us how it's done. Clean drinking water isn't red or blue, it's just good for all our people. And what a great example uh, that our communities put out there for us. So we now have an award for over $527,000 for the Ohio County Water District. I think we got Eric Hickman today yes, up here. Yes. yes. said uh, one of the critical things in the water industry today is we have aging infrastructure and this helped going back into our system and that takes away from having the ratepayers to pay additional costs so we thank you we thank the state agencies grad you were mm -hmm. appointing that uh, so yeah it's a great project we actually already got one in the ground that's Hamlin Chapel Road and then Bells Run uh, coating and a tank painting I said one of the best ad districts, but you all won for best ad district this last year, so. Uh, don't leave out that one of part there. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I learned. I can still learn okay, on this okay, job. Okay. Next, we have an award for nearly $195,000 for the city of Hartford. I think we have Mayor Wright and Judge Johnson to accept the check. Anybody else you want to bring up? Well, Hartford Council, come on up. Yeah. Let's hear it. Anybody who'd like to be a part? Thank you, Governor. Well, Mary Bell, don't be bashful. Yes, yeah, so this, uh, this oh, project here. We need one more. One more. Judge. Okay. Thank you. All right. So this is a Gillespie Street project. This was our uh, hospital. Hmm. They just done a, rem not a remodel, a uh, expansion. Rent 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 no. Expansion. Expansion, sorry. We like that. That comes with jobs. And so uh, this better serves the, them and their capacity for more water flow and all that. So. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Thank, Thank you. you. It helped us with our new $30 million surgical wing we just built on our hospital. Ooh. Next, we have $45,500 for the city of Fordsville. Judge Johnson and we have uh, Mayor Fuqua here today. If you'd please accept this check. for anybody to pronounce our name right. Um, you, you want to talk about the project? Well, this is going to finish paying for our uh, water tank uh, right. restoration and uh, uh, do away with some of the, the particles. That's great. Right. Thank, Thank you, Mayor. We have six cities in the county, and they all work really well together. Well, we got an award for one more, $160,000 to the city of Centertown. Uh, we have Mayor 
Aldrich here yes. to accept this check along with Judge Johnson. to upgrade for more efficiency. We also have a master meter project that will allow us to be more efficient with our water usage in certain parts. Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, next we have some awards to support tourism here in Ohio County, and what a time to be investing. 2022 was the best year for economic impact of tourism in Kentucky ever. We had nearly $13 billion in economic impact of our tourism industry, and it supported 91,000 Kentucky jobs. We've had more people uh, on the Bourbon Trail than ever before in our history, enjoying outdoor and adventure tourism, coming to see the amazing sights right here. Judge, yes. you've shown me a few yes. of those. We want to keep this momentum going. Uh, to do that, the General Assembly passed um, a significant amount of ARPA funds that would come back to our communities to help amplify all of these efforts. Uh, we have a couple of, of, of those awards today. The first one is for nearly $13,000 to the Ohio County Tourism Commission. We have Vice Chair Melissa uh, Pellermino. Did I hit it? Yeah. All right. And Secretary Ann Hoskins from the Ohio County Tourism Commission to join us and accept these funds. See, I'm able to mail your name each time. <laughs> Fewer letters. All right. You want to mention brag on tourism? Go. Um, well, last year saw Ohio County tourism increase by $25 million over the previous year. Um, but we just got a lot of great things going on in the county. Um, Jerusalem Ridge just ended uh, last month, and I think it was the biggest we've had in the last few years, especially with the COVID. So we're hoping to use this money to help get the word out about Ohio County and draw more people into our state or our county. So right. thank you all very much. All right. Our last tourism award is for nearly $30,000 to the Beaver Dam Tourism Commission. We have Beaver Dam Tourism Commission Executive Director Shelby Whitley, uh, along with uh, the mayor. Uh, if you all would please come up and accept these additional dollars. just wrapped up our season with our amphitheater, our, our pride and joy in town. Over 20,000 people came through town wow. this summer for our nine, ten shows. And uh, I give Shelby a lot of credit for that. She came on board in, what, May? About 18 months pregnant at the time. <laughs> Had a baby in July and was back on, back on stage in August. So we've had wow. a good summer. Uh, got a lot going on and a lot already planned for next year. So it's going to be bigger and better. All right, next, we have over $167,000 awarded to help five local nonprofits here in Ohio County. The funds were a one time direct payment recognizing that how our nonprofits couldn't stop during the pandemic. They had to help even more people during it at a time when there were fewer funds and fewer volunteers. And you know, we think about our nonprofits and their importance in times of difficulty, think about what they can do in times of prosperity. As fast as we're creating jobs right now, we're going to have a job for everybody. We can get healthy enough, educated enough, and trained enough. Think about what our nonprofits do to help stabilize families in crisis, how they help lift them back up, and if we can combine it 
with that opportunity to get in a good, stable job, how many families we can help uh, in incredible ways. So the groups today uh, that are receiving dollars include the Jerusalem Ridge Bluegrass Music Foundation of Kentucky, which received more than $79,500. Habitat for Humanity of Ohio County, which received more than $24,000. Holy Redeemer Parish of Beaver Dam, which received over $11,500. St. John Parish of Fordsville, which received a little over $6,000. And the Family Wellness Center, which received more than $45,300. We'd like to invite all the representatives of these amazing charities up here uh, to celebrate in these awards. Welcome to. Well, I would say on the money to be used for Jerusalem Ridge for the Bilmer Road Home Place, the upkeep of it. We have something that nobody else has. That Bilmer Road was born and raised in Rosine. We have the festival, so let's use this money. It'll be a big impact on people coming into the county for the festival. So. Great. Uh, all I've got to say is we're so thankful for the funding that we got to help with the tornado victims. Yeah. We helped over, we have 16 families. Eight whose, homes were, eight whose homes were totally destroyed. Eight others who were severely damaged. That makes up, equates to 41 individuals in our county. And we're currently working on the final, I think, repair to be done. And it is for a veteran. So mm. we're thankful. Cool. Oh, wow. Thank you all. Oh. What, a, what an incredible job by Habitat and so many others to try to rebuild and repair lives. Um, oh, we got one more that I missed. Oh, we'll do that here in just a second. But, but before, before we give that one out, let me, let me just say that uh, the, during the worst of the worst of, of those tornadoes, we did see some of the best of the best from the rest of the world. That team, uh, Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund, has now provided funding for over 120 homes that we've rebuilt across Western Kentucky. And it's gonna keep doing more. Uh, just seeing how people banded together and showed love to folks that have been through too much was so special. All right, one last one, which is pretty neat. Is last year, I presented a million dollars in this room for the water district intake line rebuilding project. And I know you all recently broke ground on it. We received a request to increase the funding for that project to cover the construction costs. And I know how needed it is. That's why earlier this year, we approved another $1 million to finish the line. project will affect all of us here over 20,000 people in population uh, this project's been going on since 2019 we ran into some issues we um, bid this project in February this year and the engineer estimate was 2.2 million it came back 5.1 million low bid we had three bids another one was 12 million um, so I just want to thank governor you and your, your offices with Department of Local Government mm -hmm. Grad staff, uh, Joanne and Blake has been is working with me daily on this. So I just want to thank you all for all the work you all have done. So thank you. All right. Well, I hope that today is a good day uh, because after everything we've been through, we deserve good days. Uh, it seems like, again, we faced more adversity over the last four years than I can ever remember, but now what we're seeing is as exciting as I have ever 
seen. We're coming off our two best years in our history for new economic development, and it isn't even close. You look at the grad district, over a billion dollars of new investment over the last uh, four years, over 1,300 new full-time jobs that have been announced. You know, for the first time that I can remember, all our surrounding states are suddenly jealous of us. <laughs> I mean, they're looking at us right now because we're beating them day in and, and day out. We're home to the biggest investments in the history of Ford and Amazon, and they're saying, Kentucky, how are you doing it? And Judge, I'm looking back saying, we're not telling you. <laughs> but, but this moment in time is, is special, and it can be transformative. The speed at which we're creating jobs, the national attention that we're getting. I mean, we were number two in per capita economic development in the country last year, number three in the creation of rural jobs. Uh, Site Selection Magazine has this thing called the Prosperity Cup. We came in fifth, but for the first time ever, we were number one in our region, beating out two states called Tennessee and Texas. It is fun to see Kentucky finally recognized for the place that we are, for the workforce that we have, to, to never be viewed as a flyover state ever again, but to be the destination. But like I said earlier, I think what these announcements truly do is help ensure that our kids and grandkids, every next generation of Kentuckians, have an opportunity to chase their dreams right here. I mean, we have all dreamed of the day that we could provide that type of Kentucky to everyone, to everyone having real opportunity to, to, to thrive and not just uh, to survive. And the exciting thing is we're seeing announcements come all over Kentucky, and we're going to see so many more these next couple of years. You know, 2021, our best year ever. 2022, our second best year ever. 2023 is going to be our third best year ever. And I believe next year might be this year. And so, yes, we've got some challenges in how we're going to keep up. We desperately need to invest more in our public schools because that's where our workforce training starts. And we need to make sure that we are not 44th and starting teacher pay ever again. Our plan would put us in the mid-20s. That's what the types of investments like we're making right here. It's going to make sure you see continued job growth in your communities. Uh, and of course, um, here pretty soon, I think uh, uh, we're going to have a distillery uh, open up right here in Ohio County, aren't we, Judge? Yeah, we're going to have the grand opening. It's actually producing already, but That's, we're going to have a grand opening. Rocky's going to be back down for that. Yes, sir. He doesn't miss a distillery opening. Good stuff. But, <laughs> but, you, but you, you think about a $22 million investment growing to a $30 million investment with a second phase, creating 35 new jobs in, in Beaver Dam. Look at the Fordsville Pellet Company, $11 million, 15 new jobs. Infrastructure Precast, $2 million, 50 new jobs. Uh, Nutrient Ag Solutions, uh, reinvesting and, and continued investment through the PDI program to make sure every time one of these sites is taken up, every time a new company comes, we start investing in another. Because right now, it's not shovel ready, it's build ready, and every site we announce is filling up. I'll give you an example. Six months after the tornadoes nearly wiped out all of Mayfield, we announced a PDI grant for them. Six months after that, at the one-year anniversary, we announced that a, a factory was coming, they were building, they were gonna bring 81 new jobs. And less than uh, 13 months after those tornadoes hit, we broke ground on that facility, and we now have another PDI program going on in that same park. Uh, this program, which we need continued in this next budget, is paying it forward. You know, those two Ford plants didn't come um, because of something we'd done in, in the last two weeks. They came because for decades we'd invested in that Glendale property, and this program is about making sure both of your counties have your Glendale. They were investing in you, getting roads to sites, waters to sites, uh, gas lines. Electric what, lines in what, our case. Electric lines, uh, uh, being able to purchase extra land. It's really flexible for um, your own community to make sure that that next employer, when they come in, your, your, your last site in the one they're looking at, your next site is, is what we're looking at. It's an exciting time in Kentucky when we have the dollars to do it. We've had the three largest budget surpluses in our history since I became governor, the largest rainy day fund. Last year, the lowest annual unemployment rate ever. Uh, five months ago, the lowest monthly unemployment rate ever and the longest period of low unemployment. But, but our job has got to be to turn some great years of economic development into decades of prosperity. That's what we 
all want for those future uh, generations. So we look forward to coming back and continuing to invest. When we think about these two counties, we've now uh, invested over $3.9 million in the cleaner water projects, $4.6 million in transportation, almost $300,000 uh, to increase tourism, and so much more. But at a time when your state has the money, we ought to be investing in you and our people. And the best parts of these projects is you picked them. And for the first time I can remember in Frankfurt, we have these programs, uh, some grants, some allocations, uh, but, but acknowledging that our local leaders, the mayor of a town and the county judge, you know the most important project. And Frankfurt ought to trust you with that. And working through grad, uh, these programs and what they've helped us do to move our communities forward is special. Uh, but what's most special about it is being able to invest based on local leadership and knowing you're going to get the job done. So I want to thank you all. I mean, these last four years working with judges and mayors and magistrates and city commissioners has been one of the real bright spots uh, uh, on the job. I mean, our, our job is to get things done. Our job is to get the next thing built. Our job is to get the next opportunity uh, out there and not getting caught up in whatever the arguments are that are out there. And like I say, not trying to move a state to the right or left, but just trying to move it forward for everybody. And we're going to get a chance over these next four years to continue lifting up every single Kentucky family. So I can't wait to be back. Uh, next time, Rocky actually wants to play the banjo at the Bill Monroe. Okay. You know, we'll, and, we'll have it tuned up for him. <laughs> and judge, um, judge, mayors, magistrates, and everybody else who's here today, that because you care so much about your communities, thank you and keep up the great work. This is our transformational moment. Uh, we got to make sure we get it right. God bless. All right.